Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. I know it's been a moment. I have been busy, 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 and I won't elaborate more. I've just been busy, but I wanted to pop in and make this little video, share with you guys some beautiful little objects and things that I've procured into my collection that are more in the summer spring realm. So I did a video like this back um, a while ago, and it was kind of dark romanticism. It was the winter fall items that I was loving and uh, yeah I thought it would be really fun to do something like that for spring summer of this year so I have some items here with me that I'm going to be walking you through I've broken things out into like different categories so I have accessories fragrances garments so I hope you will stick around for that uh, let's get diving in so First off, let's talk about accessories. I've been getting into accessories. Um, I, I haven't always been a huge accessories person, but I've been wanting to integrate some accessories and I've been picky and choosy on what that looks like. But something that I have been obsessed with or I was obsessed with and I have, uh, you know, tamed that craving <laughs> is clay earrings. Oh my goodness. There is something about the handcrafted quality, the the artisan work that goes into creating clay earrings that I love and adore, and I love how they look. Um, I think they're a little bit modern, they're approachable, I don't know, they're just a really cool accessory item to have, and I knew that I wanted to have my own pair of clay earrings that were going to jive with my beauty aesthetic. Now the problem that I ran into with procuring a pair of clay earrings that I had to kind of work around and keep in mind was that a lot of these clay earrings um, they can be quite statement pieces, so some of them are quite large scale, and um, and they can be odd shapes, odd shapes for me. So they can be unique shapes that don't always coincide with what's going on here. And especially for something like earrings, I want to make sure that they're the right shape because they're going to be framing my face. So when I was looking for them, I had to keep shape in mind. And then I also had to keep in mind connotation, which kind of plays into overall, di overall design and color. Now, a lot of clay earrings that I saw out there, they kind of had the connotation of something that was a little more earthy, a little more grounded. And even though I'm warm and muted, earthy and grounded doesn't bring forward my best beauty. I can wear earthy colors, but I just don't feel that it really pushes things forward for me. It just mostly kind of jives with my skin coloring and my hair, which is, you know, I have other beauty aspects to consider. So this is what I landed on. I kind of want to walk you through my little experience here with clay earrings. First off, I bought these cute pair from Etsy. This was my introduction into clay earrings. And I'll put like a little picture over on this side of the screen. Um, yeah, so these are my first pair. You can see they're a great scale for me. They're a great shape. The design elements within are beautiful. They're kind of have like these floral designs and they just frame my face really well. They actually originally came with a pale yellow top um, circular part, but that broke off. I think the woman that made these didn't choose the best clay. I think she was just starting to play around with making these. So um, these aren't my favorite pair. I think they're they're nice enough and they kind of play up the more youthful side of my beauty. So I have to be careful what I'm wearing them with and um, I kind of have to plan around that. I just don't find myself reaching for these as often, but they were my introductory first pair and I'm like, okay, these can work out. I can dive into clay earrings. Now, the second pair that I bought were these beautiful pair of rounded clay earrings. And again, the scale is very similar to the first pair. Love them. But what really made me purchase these was the design. So inside are these beautiful like lilac inspired flowers. They're just so delicate. They're so beautiful. However, the color of these is not my best. And I was hoping in the picture that these were gonna lean a little more white and they actually lean a little more gray. It's like a blue blade blue based white color um it's like a stone and so for these to frame my face like I really do try to go with things that jive with my undertone so although I love the design um these just don't go with me as well so then I moved forward 
after learning my experience with that. And I found a woman who hand makes clay earrings on Instagram. I'll put in her information and maybe I'll show a little snippet here. I absolutely adore her designs. I knew as soon as I found her that she was the one for me. She was going to be making my clay earrings. So when I first found her, she was actually launching a summer collection. And what I had found were these gorgeous pressed flower um, clay earrings. So they're clay on the back here and then she pressed real flowers into the clay and then there's like an epoxy over the top to protect them. I love the botanicals within the um, design here. Again, real botanicals, real flowers. I really love the scale. As you can see, the scale is oops whoa <laughs> the scale is a little bit larger so these are kind of my version of statement earrings which i love but they're still rounded in shape and they still maintain enough of femininity where um you know they're they jive and harmonize really well with my facial features i also love the red initially when i went on to her site um she's kind of the type of artist where she does launches and so she shows you snippets of all the products that she's going to offer and then she does a launch and you have to get to her website like right on the dot whatever time it is noon and um put everything in your cart and hurry 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 and make sure that somebody doesn't buy it and and all that kind of stuff so when I went there somebody had bought the earrings that I was prospecting which were actually a little more pink in color and I'm actually really glad that I um was kind of forced to get these i think they worked out really well they're so beautiful i actually really love the red color they have these like gold circular details here and um yeah super pleased with these as my clay earrings now i also wanted to get a pair of clay earrings that were actually you identifiably clay because that's kind of the appeal of having clay earrings is they they have that natural material kind of feel to them and they're identifiable so these you wouldn't necessarily um identify off the bat as clay earrings so she also had another botanical kind of variety of earrings that i purchased which are these right here now these are unique because they're not fully rounded but they have enough rounded shapes where they do um they do harmonize well with me. Again, these lean into being more of statement earrings for me. On another individual, these might just be ordinary scale um, earrings, but these lean into being larger scale um, against my features. So I really, really love these. Again, I'll put a close-up picture of these because you're not really getting the full detail of what's going on here. They're these are actually um, stamped. So they're stamped with these dainty kind of flower botanical situation. And I just think that they're beautiful. The color goes way better with my natural coloring. I'll pick up these other ones so you can kind of compare here. These are more gray toned, blue undertone leaning, and these are more of the warm toned. And you can just see the difference here. So, um, you know, these are also neutral. I, I really wanted something that wasn't going to be too flamboyant, especially with the red flower earrings that I got. And so I think that these fit the belt beautifully. So again, handcrafted. I love everything about that and I'll put her information below. So had to have the clay earrings. Now, another accessory that I was looking to get into or type of accessory is hair accessories. Um, I found the best hair accessories for me. They are big enough to hold my hair up, but they remain kind of feminine and dainty and, um, small and rounded in nature where they look beautiful even if they're near my face so they're not going to be extremely distracting and I actually have one in right now um I'll kind of turn around and show you guys some of my hair is kind of peeking out here so I'll turn around And you can see that I'm able to easily just put my hair up and out of my face 
while still having something a little stylish, something a little dainty and beautiful and pretty. So if I'm hanging around my nieces and nephews or, you know, doing whatever, I got to do the dishes or something like that, I can still have a sense of beauty about me, which is something that I do look for moving forward in my overall beauty aesthetic. So love these. Again, I just got them off of Etsy for a really affordable price. Um, and uh, yeah, I got two different shapes because I wanted to kind of have that variety. So I love those. One last accessory that I want to mention, I didn't bring it here with me, is my straw hat. I have a straw hat that I wear to not only protect me from the sun, but add as a nice accessory to different ensembles during the summer. The scale of the hat works well for me, the shape of it works well, and again, I get that nice sun coverage. So moving forward though, I do want to talk about fragrances. I have been getting big into fragrances. I have um, spent many, many time, much time, many of hours, am I willing to admit this? Many hours in the department stores and Sephora, smelling all the fragrances, getting to know um, different brands and what I like and what I like to wear on me, what I like to smell on me. And these are the fragrances that I've landed on for this summer. Now, the first one is called um, Solar Bloom and it's from Clean Reserve. I love this brand. They're kind of, a, as they're name indicates they're kind of like a clean brand so you know they're in the genre of sustainability and using clean ingredients and stuff like that which I really jive with you know anything that I'm kind of like putting on my face I, I lean in that direction I'm not putting perfume on my face but anything I put on my skin I'm leaning in that direction so um yeah I absolutely love this fragrance it reminds me of Ooh, it is sophisticated. It's my version of sophisticated. So not every fragrance is meant for me, right? And that's that can be said for anybody. And I like to keep in mind my overall beauty aesthetic because if I reach for a perfume that is too sophisticated or too serious, there's this disjointed effect that happens, you know? There, there's something that's a little off. And this perfume is actually... It offers that kind of perf conventional perfumey smell, but then there's an undercurrent of like warmth. I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe like a citrus kind of situation where it's still fresh, but approachable and, and not too serious. It still retains a slightly youthful effect. And I love that about this. So I do intend on getting a full bottle of this. I'm real big on getting samples just to make sure that I really like the fragrance and I like the way it wears on my skin before I commit to a full bottle, um, you know, and feel like maybe, ooh, this wasn't the thing for me. So the next fragrance that I have absolutely loved is from the fragrance house Juliet has a gun and I love this fragrance it's their flagship fragrance and it's called not a perfume and it is exactly what the name indicates it is oh, it's so fresh and light it doesn't have that conventional perfumey smell it's like you're in a, a garden in the crisp you know hours of the morning time and you're wearing a, you know, a sundress, it's still warm enough out where you're wearing something that's a little more um, revealing or, you know, is a little more light, but you still, there's still a sense of, a subtle sense of elegance. I don't know. I'm not the best at, uh, you know, pointing out the actual notes of this, but it's more of a feeling. And so that's the feeling that I get with this. It's fresh. It's a little bright but it's not overpowering, it's inviting, and it does have a little bit of that youthful kind of feeling. And so I absolutely love putting this on just in, um, you know, kind of uh, pared down ensembles. So I wouldn't, like this wouldn't be my going out to dinner fragrance, but this is like an everyday fragrance, especially for those really hot days. It has enough of this fresh kind of note where it cuts through the heat, but it's not overbearing. So um, I, I just love this. And the really cool thing about this particular perfume is that it was formulated, so the base note is actually your personal chemistry. So it kind of gives off a different fragrance with each individual, and I kind of liked that. It, it made it a little more unique. Now, another fragrance that I've absolutely been loving that is from Juliet Has a Gun, the same 
fragrance house is called Lipstick Fever. Now, at first, I didn't know if I was going to like Lipstick Fever because it's it sounds like maybe it's going to be powdery or I think of like old old timey you know maybe 1940s that kind of vibe and although I love that overall aesthetic the fragrances of that time aren't really my vibe and so I was expecting that with this and this was a whole different experience when I first smelt this I smelled raspberries I smelt berries I smelt fresh I just Ooh, it is, it's a different kind of, it's similar, but it's a different kind of fresh than the, not a, not a perfume. And this is just something that has like a brightness to it. It's a little more playful. This is something that I wear when my ensemble is a little more youthful, a little more playful, a little more bright. Um, so I've actually used almost the whole sample of this. There's only just a little bit left. I'm not going to buy a full bottle of this yet. I think I'm going to wait until next spring, but this is definitely, I would say, a signature spring and summer fragrance for me. I absolutely adore it, and I'm not going to buy a full bottle because I still have the rest of this to go through, which will definitely last me through the rest of the warm months. So those are the fragrances that I've been indulging in this summer and I will tell you what it was quite the journey to get to this point because I can't tell you how many little samples I brought home with me how many samples I kind of purchased online and I was in the stores and you know what I really liked that experience I like the experience of creating an environment for myself um, having the experience of what's my version of XYZ product. So it was actually a really fun time. I kind of found it a little soothing and therapeutic to just go into Sephora and the girls were so sweet, you know, and I'm like, I think I'm just gonna be here for a little bit because I wanted to spray and I kind of wanted to smell and I took some of the samples home with me. So um, this was an area of my kind of beauty items that I wanted to be sure of. I didn't want to just smell something and say that smells good and then bring it home with me. I have an intimate connection with smell. I think a lot of us do and I wanted to really give it some time and develop. I know it sounds ridiculous because it's just a perfume, it's just a fragrance, but I really did want to develop a relationship with these scents because they are so heavily connected to like memories and connotations and you know some of these fragrances I smelled and it would bring up something and I'm like whoa I haven't I feel like I haven't smelled that in forever you know or it smelled like this person that I met years ago so anyways I'm really glad on where I landed with those and I wanted to share those with you guys okay so let's move forward with makeup items that I procured. Now, makeup is an area of my beauty collection that I really tried to keep pared down for a couple different reasons. The first is that I found that I, for a moment, started procuring items that were basically duping themselves. So I would have similar eyeshadows that were, they wore essentially the same. And I'm like, why do I have more than one of this? It didn't make any sense to me that I was doing that. So I stopped doing that. But also I have a vanity space and I really don't want my makeup collection to exceed that space. I don't want to have to store my makeup items, some of my makeup items in a different area. I kind of just want to have free roam to grab whatever I want. And when I sit down, everything is available to me and I can kind of make decisions on what my beauty routine is going to be that day. So I try to be cautious of getting too much into my collection. So I think I did pretty well this season. And what the two items that I am super proud to have added into my collection are from Lisa Eldridge. You know how I feel about Lisa Eldridge. If you've watched any of my other videos, she is like Mama Lisa. We have Papa Wayne, Wayne Goss. And, uh, you know, she's just, she's near and dear to my heart. She's a lovely woman and she's taught me a lot about um, makeup application. She came out with her own brand and I do have two other lipsticks by her. I really wanted to get her blushes that she launched this last collection, but they sold out in time before I could get my hands on one. So I bought two lipsticks. The lipstick that I have been wearing quite frequently this um, summer is actually called Kitten Mischief. And she said that she selfishly 
made this for herself. And I'm so glad that she did. She said when she was demoing this lipstick that she couldn't find a lipstick on the market like this and that she she's wanted one for a really long time and I know exactly what she means and it is so perfect. It is so beautiful. Obviously, lipsticks will pull differently on different skin tones and different um, skin depths so everyone's going to have a little bit of a different experience but for me this is a very fresh light uh kind of spring summer color that just kind of freshens up my face i wouldn't say that it's exactly like my lip color but better but it's a lighter more uplifting version of my lip color and i love that so i'll do a little swatchy here You can kind of see that there. So it's not as opaque as a um, conventional like matte lipstick or anything like that, but it's such a beautiful color and I'll try to insert some photos over here of me wearing this lip color. I think I posted at least one on my Instagram. And then I bought her shade in Spirited Away and this, this is my lip color, but better. I can put this on and essentially wear it with anything in my wardrobe. It's going to look good with anything. It brightens up my lips, my natural lip color, it livens up my face, it does everything that I want it to do, and it's fuss-free. So I don't have to line my lips, the formula is amazing. I just am so delighted to have this in my makeup collection. So here is Spirited Away, and then this is Kitten Mischief. So I absolutely adore anything that she puts out and um, I'm so happy to have these in my collection. Now another makeup item that I have been using and loving this summer season is from Charlotte Tilbury and this was similar to my fragrance experience where I was on the hunt and I wanted a particular experience out of a lipstick. I was on the hunt for my version of Barbie Pink which is kind of a tall order for someone who is warm and muted. Conventionally, a Barbie pink lipstick is going to have vibrancy to it, it's going to have a blue base, it's going to be cool toned, and it's usually going to look most harmonious on somebody who is cool but cool toned and more vibrant in color. So they have high chroma. So think conventionally um, winter types, winter seasonal coloring types. So to find my version of Barbie pink took some scouring. I had to kind of hang around and really get a feel for what colors were going to work best. And I settled on this color from Charlotte Tilbury and it is called Karina's Star. Karina's? Yeah, Karina's Star. And it is over here, right there. And on my hand, it might not seem like a Barbie pink vibe, but when I put it on my lips, there's an effect that happens that it's it, add, it adds a pink vibrancy, it's very feminine, it's girly, it kind of gives that vibe. So it's not that I wanted to have an exact Barbie pink lipstick. I just wanted the effect. I wanted that kind of cute, girl, you know, maybe I'll wear my hair in some cute little space buns or something. Not that I do that much anymore, but I just wanted that vibe. And oops, over here, this this gives me that vibe. So um, I've been having a lot of fun playing with that. And that's something that I really look for in makeup items is that I can play and I can I can kind of mix things and, you know, I can kind of just create the little mood that I'm in for that day. So the last item that I have for my summer makeup is a blush. Now, blush in general is a must for me these days. I absolutely love blush application. This summer I've been doing a little bit more of the sunburnt kind of look um, in a more sophisticated way and something that's been helping me achieve that look is this blush from Bobbi Brown. Now I can tell that the camera is not fully capturing the potential of this blush and what it actually does for my face. It's right over here 
but when I put it on, it really gives me a beautiful, just sun-kissed look. And I think that that really complements my yin features, my rounded features. I already have kind of chubby cheeks. So I think it really brings forward some of my best yin features to do that sort of makeup application. And I really love the formula. It's beautiful. It sinks into my skin. And um, yeah, I just, I felt myself reaching for this time and time and time again over the summertime. Okay, the next category of items are garments. Now, I'm pretty picky about what I bring into my wardrobe these days. I do a lot of secondhand shopping. I'm always on Poshmark kind of scouring about there, seeing what items I can find. And I'm really in the mode of curating rather than participating in a lot of temporary trends or anything like that. But something that I just couldn't resist purchasing um, and I'll interrupt myself here real quick and let you guys know something about myself. And that's, I buy, that is that I buy out of season. So what I mean by that is I will buy, uh, summer items in the winter. And for instance, a couple weeks ago, I was scouting out some, uh, fall and winter sweaters. It's just something that I like to do. I find that when I shop for those items in season, my size runs out really quickly. Um, I just, I feel panicked or maybe if I have to go online and order it, I'm waiting longer than what I want to. So I just want to be prepared for when the occasion comes around or when the weather arrives that I have what I need and I have what I like. So something that I purchased for spring and summer back in late winter is this beautiful matching set that I got off of Poshmark. It's a Reformation brand and it is this cherry red and hearts separate piece. So it's kind of a crop top with a midi length skirt that um, is just so beautiful. I thought it was so playful and fun. I love that red color on me. I feel like it's almost, it acts as a vibrant kind of neutral. It's something um, that I can wear with ease. So, um, you know, like the red that I'm wearing today. So I just, I, I had to have it. And it was a, si a couple sizes too big for me. I think about it in a size eight and then I had it tailored in. So it's custom fit for me. And I have just haven't been having the best time wearing the top with different bottoms. So I'll wear the top with a pair of jean shorts or I'll wear it with, um, my kind of stretchy wide leg high-waisted pants or um, I even wore it with kind of like a jumpsuit for um, fourth of July weekend so it was just like a really fun garment to have in my collection I don't know I've been having kind of back and forth thoughts on it if I'm going to keep the set or if I'm actually going to resell it I've been considering reselling it because um, I don't know like it was fun while I had it but also I want, I want pieces, they can offer some pizzazz, they can offer some uniqueness, but it feels a little separate from my overall wardrobe. Even though I can easily mix and match it with things, it's something that is very niche. And so it sounds like something that you would want to keep, but I don't know, just been having this little gut feeling to maybe, to maybe give it a new home and somebody else would, would love it and wear it a little more long-term than myself. That's another thing that I kind of battled with is I am a woman who's coming into a particular type of maturity. It doesn't mean that I can't be playful and fun and play up my youthfulness, but I'm 32 years old and I just want to have pieces in my wardrobe that maybe aren't so playful. I feel like this set would be gorgeous on a woman who's maybe really um, experiencing their their youth, maybe they're in their early to mid 20s, somewhere in that range, and they would get a lot more wear out of it and it would be in their wardrobe for a longer amount of time. So anyways, I've just been going back and forth on that. But the next garment that I brought into my wardrobe that I'm so happy that I did is this cute jean dress. And like I said, I'll put a picture over here of me in it. And, um, you know, sometimes I get a little self-conscious. For instance, today I'm wearing um, a top that I was actually wearing in a few videos ago, which was actually filmed a while ago. So there's been some time, but 
I, um, I was like, oh gosh, I got to wear a different shirt. I got to do that. You know, I feel like people are judging me if I don't have versatility or something. And really it comes down to what do I want? You know, what do, what am I comfortable in? And so I was going to change my top today and I didn't, and I got the red lipstick on and I'm like, we're going with the top. And that's kind of how I feel about this dress. This dress is my go-to summer garment. It's comfortable. It contours the natural curves of my body beautifully without being constricting or feeling like I'm kind of squeezed in there like a sausage. Um, the material itself has a little bit of stretch, so it's a denim, and the denim gives it a kind of casual connotation, but it's comfortable. It's also a little bit um, fun and flirty, but conservative at the same time. The neckline is kind of a scoop neckline but it's it's conservative especially with a woman with a bigger bust that is something that I look for in a casual garment and the shoulders are constructed at just the right width where I feel that it's still summery and I'm getting a little bit of sun kiss on my shoulders and I kind of have a little bit of airflow but at the same time it's not so thin and delicate that my bust is overpowering it Overall, it's just a garment that checks all the boxes. I can throw it on and then I can do a lot of versatile kind of hair and makeup styles around it. And um, I just, I feel comfortable in it. So I, I love those sorts of items for myself and I've become more comfortable wearing those sorts of garments over and over without feeling self-conscious that nobody thinks that I have clothes to wear or have versatility in my wardrobe. So that's kind of been a little bit of like a spiritual journey along with, um, you know, having a garment that I really get to enjoy and wear and get a lot of, a lot of, um, I don't know, like memories in, you know, I went to a concert with my husband. It was like an outdoor concert in it and I was wearing my straw hat and, you know, clay earrings. And I just, I thought it was like a whole, it was just a whole vibe, you know? So I'm like, ah, we can just go anywhere in this thing. I can also play with my nieces and nephews and it's not so much of a precious garment that I'm worried about getting little stuff on it, even though it is a lighter denim, you know? So I just love and adore it. And I just thought I would share that with you all that I'm glad to have it in my wardrobe. Okay, so there's two more things that I want to mention as far as garments. The first actually has to do more with color. So color has been something that I've really, I've shied away from. You guys have seen me wear black a lot at one point in time and then kind of gotten into some other things. And recently I've really been enjoying wearing a softer, kind of lighter, but still muted yellow. Not quite a pastel yellow, but just a softer yellow. I have gotten quite a few compliments on a shirt that I have recently incorporated into my wardrobe. I think that the overall texture, the construction, and some of the details of the shirt really do, it's a cotton shirt, I'll put a picture of it here, um, really do help to bring in all of the elements that harmonize really well with me but also the color itself gives a little bit more of a feminine youthfulness that isn't so juvenile necessarily that I think really harmonizes beautifully with me. So it's really taught me to step outside of the realm of what is conventionally suggested especially for a warm muted undertone you know a lot of people would classify me as like a rich autumn or um, a deep autumn or something like that because of my darker eyes and my darker hair but I have other beauty features to really consider so you know kind of stepping outside the bounds of what what you think should be and really looking and seeing what truly harmonizes I think is a really cool experience. So yellow is something that I'm looking to incorporate more of and play around with more of um, as the summers kind of go on. I think I'm at the stopping point with yellow this summer because we're leading into um, colder months but that's something that I wanted to keep in mind. And then I also wanted to mention in general florals. I've been incorporating more florals into my wardrobe and have um, brought in some floral print dresses that I've really been enjoying wearing over the summer. And I've been prospecting getting floral dresses that work well in the summer, but can also be integrated and used into my winter wardrobe. So 
They can easily be layered so I can layer a pair of tights underneath with a maybe like a mock neck long sleeve top underneath and it works just as well. That's something that I look for in my wardrobe is versatility. So those were all of my summer items. I don't think there was anything else that I'm missing in this video and um yeah, I thought it would be fun to share with you guys what that looked like for me and all the cute little items. So I hope that you guys have had a great summer so far. We have a little bit left and then we're going to be getting into the fall season, which I'm actually really excited about. But um, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you maybe got some little tips from it or some maybe items that you want to look into. Um, or, you know, just generally kind of got a better idea of where I'm coming from and what my beauty aesthetic looks like. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you at the next video. Bye!